At the beginning of the series, we see a boy named Hayato walking into a cafe. He comments to himself about how his grandma's cafe looks the same as ever and talks about how the place would be more profitable if he tore it down rather than sell it. After inspecting the cafe, Hayato walks into the main house, a spacious bungalow with numerous unused rooms. Hayato is glad that he gets to enjoy his own company, but Oka, a girl with pink-colored hair, steps into the room in nothing but her undergarments. Hayato is so stunned by this that he instantly takes off running. He opens the door to the other room with the intention of protecting himself from the evils that lay outside, but he's surprised when another girl walks in and takes off her panties. She doesn't spare him a glance as she assumes that it's one of the other girls and she tells him that she was just coming back from a group workout session that had left her sweaty. She gives him her panties before asking him to wash them with the rest of the laundry. She glances at it and comes to the sudden realization that he's a boy but Hayato, who is unsure of what to say, collects the pants and takes off running. While running, he alerts a blonde-haired girl named Akayan who opens her room door in nothing but her undies. He wonders what three women are doing in his house and he keeps running for safety, but he runs past Shirajuku, a girl with dark green hair who opens her room door in her underwear. Hayato finally manages to find a room that doesn't open as he passes and he opens the door to see the biggest shocker of all. A girl lying in a weird position while wearing nothing but her undies. He wonders what kind of girl would sleep in that position and how he was sharing a mansion with five girls before running back to the hallway. But this time, he is cornered by the four girls from earlier. Amy, the fitness guru, gives him a roundhouse kick and Hayato wakes up to see himself tied up and surrounded by the girls. They accuse him of being a burglar, but Hayato asks them how he can be a burglar in his grandmother's house. They realize that he's the grandson of the former owner and tell him how she had told them so much about him. They also reveal that his grandma had told them that he's a scholar at Tokyo University. The five girls apologize for beating him and tying him up and Hayato asks them to release him, but they refuse because he had practically seen them make it. The girls take their turns to reintroduce themselves to him. The young Mrs. Akane, the blonde-haired lady who is 19 years old but also a year older than Hayato. Up next is Uka, the pink-haired girl who studies fashion design in college. Amy, the purple-haired girl, is a fitness enthusiast, while Riho, the girl with orange-colored hair, is a third-year college student and ed enthusiast. Shirajuku, the girl with dark green hair, is also a college student, but Hayato soon discovers that she's more shy and reserved than the others. After they were done introducing themselves, Hayato tells them his plans of taking down the cafe and building a park since it would be more profitable. He also suggests that they move out, but the girls try to convince him against this as they have no money and nowhere to move to. They'd further reveal that his grandma had called them family and asked to stay, so they basically have a right to be there. Amy, the fitness enthusiast, chooses this moment to remind Hayato that he wasn't even around for his grandmother's burial, and they had paid for her burial. The other girls call him a heartless jerk, and a cane, the blonde-haired lady, reveals that they had been working part-time for the last year and were hoping to make enough money to get through college. The girls try convincing Hayato against rebuilding the restaurant, but he doesn't listen. Later on, the girls decide to convince Hayato to keep the restaurant by seducing him. Ryo tells the other girls that all men have perverted thoughts running through their minds all the time, and they decide to figure out how much of a virgin loser he is by dressing Oka, the fashion designer, in a maid's outfit. Later that day, Uka enters Hayato's room and calls him master before before asking if he would like some pilaf for dinner, but Hayato tells her that her trick would not work and asks her to prepare fried chicken instead. Hayato tries explaining that she only knows how to cook pilaf because it was the only recipe she had learned from his grandma, but he asks her to make fried chicken. Unfortunately, Uka ends up burning the entire chicken, and they're all forced to eat the burnt food at dinner. The girls realize that Hayato had probably figured out their plans of seducing him, so they decide to drop his guard. The girls call him master and ask if he would like to shower first and Hayato heads to the bathroom first. He's surprised that the girls didn't walk into the bathroom or try pulling off some tricks, so he drops down his guard a little bit. On his way to his room, Hayato notices that the cafe is open and goes in for a drink, but he sees a king smoking. He asks her not to smoke, but she reveals that she's smoking chocolate, after which she smugly asks if he was allowed to be that strict about a bar that he planned on closing. Later on, we see Riho, the fashion designer, sharing a drink with Shirajuku, the reserve girl. After the reserve girl drinks, Riho laughs gleefully and apologizes for using her as the sacrificial lamb. She then reveals that a little booze always brings out Shirajuku's perverted side alongside her weird smell fetish for males. A few minutes later, Shirajuku, the reserve girl, gets drunk as the drink hits hard. She goes to Hayato's room and tries to seduce him, but Amy, the fitness enthusiast who knew nothing of Ryo's plans, gives Hayato a thorough thrashing as she assumes that he had tried taking advantage of her. Meanwhile, Ryo cries about Amy ruining her plans of blackmailing Hayato with a video of him and Shirajuku. 
The following day, the girls apologize to Hayato by asking Shirajuku and the reserved girl to make him some food. Amy asks Shirajuku if she likes stinking things because she's attracted to the smell of a man's sweat, but Shirajuku asks Amy what she's talking about. Hayato is surprised as he realizes that Shirajuku had forgotten everything she did the previous night. Just then, some men arrive and inspect the cafe. They tell Hayato that they'll back with an estimate of how much it costs to take down the cafe, but one of the men removes the cafe's signboard forcefully. Hayato confronts him for it, and the girls are surprised that he's interested in keeping the cafe signboard despite wanting to take it down. Later on, Ryo overhears Hayato talking to himself about how he had enrolled in Tokyo University because he wanted to become rich enough to pay off his grandma's debt. She realizes that he wasn't as cold-hearted as she thought, and she makes pilaf for him. Shirajuku initially refuses the pilaf but eats it after hearing that his grandmother had asked Ryo to make it for him if she passed on before he returned. Later on, Hayato calls the girls together and tells them of his plans to keep the restaurant for a year. He reveals that he would demolish it in a year if it doesn't yield a lot of profit and asks the girls to stay. The girls are thrilled by this revelation, and they agree to work part-time. Meanwhile, Hayato secretly wonders if the girls would bring prosperity to the cafe or become the agents of poverty that finally wrecked it. After a while, Hayato assembles the girls for a meeting and asks how they'll be sharing their cleaning duties. Rito complains about her acrylic nail paint coming off, while Amy reveals that she specializes in getting stuff dirty. Akayan also complains about having low blood pressure, so she can't do any cleaning and Oka declares that she hates cleaning. Hayato asks how they had managed to complete all the house chores in the past and the girls reveal that his grandma did the majority of the work. Shirajuku offers to do all the cooking, but Hayato tells them that he doesn't like it when people push all their duties to timid people. He eventually gets all the girls to work by suggesting that they sent his grandmother to an early grave. While Loka mops the stairs, Hayato pauses to taunt her about doing her chores despite hating cleaning, but she ignores him and bends down, revealing her panties. Hayato is stunned by this and he stutters while trying to tell her that her panties are showing. Ryo passes by at that moment and tells Oka that her panties are showing. Luka is so stunned by this that she misses her footing and falls off the stairs. She crash lands on Hayato who faints from being hit. Later on, Hayato is seen doing the laundry when he takes out a cane's underwear. She reports him to the other girls and they get pissed at him because he implies that undies are like normal clothing and he can touch or dry them whenever he likes. Later on, Hayato assists Shirajuku in cleaning up the cafe and she thanks him for standing up for her. She reveals that was actually scared about doing the house chores alone because she would resume classes at college soon and she wasn't sure she could keep up with all the dishes. Hayato tells her not to let others push her around but he suddenly realizes that she was using a polite tone to address him and he asks her to stop speaking politely to him and the other girls. Shirajuku invites Hayato for dinner because his grandma had insisted that the family should always share dinner while she was alive. However, the other girls keep malice with him because they're still mad about the underwear incident. After dinner, Hayato decides on taking a shower but Oka walks in on him as he bathes while wearing nothing but her undergarments. She shrieks in surprise and Amy, the fitness enthusiast, comes to her rescue. She declares that world peace and women's rights are hers to defend before punching Hayato's headlights out. Later on, Hayato tells the girls that since the restaurant would be opening soon, he plans on practicing how to make coffee with them. Hayato steps up to the brewer and makes the coffee with a confident expression on his face and the girls are excited to taste his coffee as they assume that he's probably good at it. Hayato serves them the coffee and the girls are disappointed to discover that he sucks at making coffee. A king in the blonde-haired girl certainly doesn't hide her opinions as she reveals that his coffee tastes like crap. Hayato tells them that it's probably because they all hate him that they're not giving him the reviews he deserves but after tasting it himself, he realizes that they're right. Later that day, Akane is seen reading in the cafe shop when Hayato complains and mutters to himself about how hard it could be to make coffee. Akane tells him that she can't focus on all the noise and she would love to get some coffee. Hayato asks her to make some coffee for him since he was pretty opinionated about his coffee. But after Akane makes the coffee for both herself and Hayato, he's surprised to see that it tastes freaking good. Akane reveals that his grandmother had taught her how to make coffee and Hayato asks her to teach him. She refuses to teach him because he uses a commandeering tone but eventually agrees after he begs. She recalls what his grandmother had told her about Hayato being sulky when things don't go his way, but he always finds a way to apologize. Later on, Emmy walks in on Hayato while he bathes despite him putting a bath in use sign. She punches the living daylights out of him despite her being at fault. The following day, Hayato asks Ryo to escort him for customary visits to his grandma's business partners, but she cheekily asks if he so badly wanted to go out on a date with her. Hayato reveals that he couldn't take the other girls because they would dirty the image of their business. He emphasizes how Oka constantly badmouths him and gets into arguments with him about undergarments, while the Kane's lack of expression and social skills suck. While Shirajuku would have been an excellent alternative, she's shy and reserved and Amy is a creep so there was literally no way he could take her. During their visits to his grandma's former business partners, Hayato talks to them with a dry expression on his face while Ryo plays the role of an affable sociopath even going so far as to earn them a discount. Hayato suggests 
suggests that they return home together, but Ryo suggests that they first stop by the shrine. She later reveals that his grandmother had thought it best to inform the gods about any new business or new developments in her life. Hayato tells Ryo that he's glad she actually cares about something, but Ryo has an outburst and tells him not to taint his grandmother's name. She also asks him to bow and show respect to people who are willing to help him. Hayato realizes his faults and apologizes to Ryo before informing her that he's going back for his second customary visit and this time he plans on doing it right. Ryo is surprised as she realizes that he's not as bad as he seems and she decides to reward his change of heart by raising her skirt to show him her panties. Hayato tries to stop her, but he falls off the mountain and Ryo realizes that he's not someone to rely on as a romantic partner. Later on, Luka gets into a fight with Hayato about washing his socks with her undies, but he tells her that he was only trying to reduce their laundry bills. Ryo comments about how he's always fighting with Oka and asks him to make up with her by complimenting her. Ryo also asks him to stop watching porn in public and Hayato tries convincing her that he doesn't do such. Later on, Hayato watches Oka as she dries the laundry and he complains loudly about not knowing what to say to Oka. Akan overhears him and asks him to compliment Oka since he seemed to be good at complimenting people, but Hayato tells her that he's obviously not as good as she thinks since his words did not affect her. Akane turns away and blushes before telling him that she was used to getting compliments from people, but his words might have a greater effect on Oka. Hayato turns to Oka and tries to compliment her, but he's unable to find something to praise her for. He finally decides to tell her that the fact that she can do laundry is an achievement for her, especially since she hates it. Oka takes the wrong way as Hayato smiles creepily at her, and she throws her slippers at his forehead. Later that day, Hayato joins the girls for dinner and tries praising Oka by telling them that all the dishes taste good except the salad. Oka sorely reveals that she made the salad and Hayato is pained by his failed attempt. He later comments about how anyone would consider putting wine on salad instead of wine vinegar. Later on, Hayato is asked to inform Oka that the bath is free. Hayato calls out to Oka, but she doesn't answer. After calling her for a while without getting a response, he enters her room and sees her wearing the outfit of a waitress. Hayato compliments the outfit and he's surprised when Oka blushes and thanks him. She reveals that she had sewn and designed the outfit herself and she hoped to become a world-class fashion designer in the future. Later on, Emi walks into Hayato's room and teasingly asks if he wants to squeeze her boobs but Hayato screams at her and tells her to go make coffee or something. After a while, Hayato Hayato assembles the girls and pays them before opening week. Akane suggests that he saves their payment until opening week because new expenses might come up but Hayato tells them that the stocks he bought since high school have recently increased. Hayato is surprised by how Emi stays awfully quiet at dinner and he comments about this but she says nothing. Later on, Hayato goes fishing by a river but he is joined by Emi. Hayato comments about how nice it is that everyone is finally blending well with each other and Amy asks who he thinks is responsible for this. Hayato realizes that it's his grandmother because she had told the girls everything they need to know about him. Amy turns to leave, but before she does, she tells him that the things that are considered important to people are often the things that get broken. Amy turns to leave, but before she does, she asks him to forgive her if she's responsible for breaking that which is most precious to him. Later on, Ryo informs Hayato that she heard the stocks of the company he invested in have tanked, and Hayato decides to pull out his stocks before their value decimates. He suddenly realizes that his laptop is broken and asks who had broken it. Amy apologizes for Riho and reveals that she accidentally broke it with her dumbbell the other day after he asked her to make some coffee. She teasingly asks him to squeeze her chest to calm his anger, but Hayato surprises her by marching up to her with a hideous expression on his face before rough handling her. Ryo advises Amy to stop carrying her dumbbell when carrying tea, but mistakenly drops the dumbbell on Hayato's desktop. Hayato asks Ryo if she wants him to have a squeeze as well, but Ryo screams out no in fear and runs away as Hayato chases her around with a hideous expression on his face. Later on, Hayato tells the girls that the cafe would be officially open the following day and they would be on a tight budget due to obvious reasons. The cafe finally reopens and Hayato serves its first customers. He's surprised to hear that they enjoyed his coffee, but the girls call him aside and ask him to remain courteous and kind to the other customers because they would have a mix of good and bad reviews from customers. Hayato is filled with pride after Akane compliments his coffee as she reveals that his coffee-making skills have definitely gotten better. Just when business seems to be going so well, his grandma's former debtor arrives and condescends talks to Hayato. Hayato holds back even after the man likens his grandmother to a grasshopper, but the girls get so cross that they almost beat him with a mop. Hayato apologizes to the man before revealing that the girls were in a bad mood since they'd been having issues with a cockroach that was currently sitting behind the old man's leg. The old man raises one of the girls' outfits and asks why they're wearing weird outfits, but Hayato flares up and grabs the man's wrists before threatening to send him to jail. He is backed up by customers who tell the offending old man that they'll be glad to play the role of witnesses. After the old man leaves, Hayato asks Amy to sprinkle salt on the entrance to ward off bad omen. 
After their opening week, Hayato gets depressed as fewer people visit the restaurant and he decides to come up with a new sales strategy. He later informs the girls that he plans on setting up a coffee stall for the summer. Shirajiku suggests that they develop new summer recipes and tries experimenting with liquor, but Hayato warns her about it as he recalls what happened the previous time. Shirajiku asks him not to worry as the liquor would get evaporated while they were making the cake. Ryo walks into the kitchen at that moment and assumes that Hayato is trying to seduce Shirajiku, but Hayato tells her that Shirajiku had only been showing him how to cook. Later on, Hayato asks Shirajiku how she had first developed an interest in cooking, and she reveals that she was inspired to learn because of the wonderful scent of a delicious meal from a restaurant in Spain. Hayato is surprised when Shirajiku suddenly makes an absurd comment about his smell and tries to force herself on him. He suddenly realizes that she had gotten drunk from evaporated alcohol, but Ryo walks in at that moment and calls Hayato a pervert. Later that night, Hayato works on improving his coffee brewing skills in the cafe and Akane asks if he would consider adding a cookie recipe that his grandmother and her created to their summer recipe. Hayato thanks Akane and tells him that she should have told him sooner and the cookie recipe is added to their summer special. Later on, Oka designs new uniforms for their summer stalls and she asks Amy to try them out. Amy suggests that she incorporates flower missiles into the uniform and Uka tells her that she'll consider doing it. The following day, Hayato and Amy set up their stall for their summer sale and Oka tags along. Hayato's grandma's former business partners give him some food to welcome him to the summer sale, but Amy grabs it without restraint. He tries cautioning her but she's so eager to taste the food that she wakes Oka by stuffing some of the food into her mouth just so she could enjoy her share. Later on, Uka leaves for the restroom but she runs into some gangsters on her way back. They try making moves on her but Amy and Hayato defend her. They are joined by the crowd who promise to take a video and upload it on the internet. The following day, Hayato, Amy, and Oka arrive at their stall but they're surprised to see that it has been broken apart. People sympathize with them but Hayato announces that they're withdrawing their stall. On their way back, Uka apologizes for leading the gangsters to them as she realizes that they were probably responsible for thrashing their stall, but Hayato informs her that they were not withdrawn from the summer sales, they were simply returning with a new strategy. Hayato, Amy, and Uka head out to a store after arriving at home and Riho and Akane wonder what they're up to. We soon discover that Hayato had led Amy and Alka to purchase materials for a mobile cart. Uka designs the new cart and they launch their new product the following day. Uka is surprised at the influx of customers that they receive at their coffee stall and Hayato informs her that it was all thanks to Ryo, who was working as their social media manager. He further reveals that she had uploaded pictures of their coffee stall on social media and was now responding to every single comment while telling people to grab a coffee and some of their delicious summertime cookies if they're in the area. The summertime cookies are a hit amongst new customers and Amy ends up exercising by racing home on multiple occasions because they sell way much more than their cart can hold. After the day's sales, Amy, Hayato, and Oka drive the cart back home, but Hayato complains that the only problem with this plan is the fact that he doesn't have enough physical strength to push the cart. Amy suggests that Hayato joins her in her workout sessions, but Hayato refuses. Just then, they run into the gangsters from the other day. The gangsters beat Hayato, but Amy walks up to them and beats them up. She suddenly collapses from physical exhaustion, and one of the gangsters tries to take advantage of the positive turn of events. Surprisingly, Amy launches flower missiles into his eyes and gives him a roundhouse kick. Hayato walks up to them and tells them that they had better run away because they got another fighter at their cafe, and she was the craziest of them all, the mad dog Oka. The gangsters take off running, but after they leave, Oka dryly asks Hayato who he was calling the mad dog. She also expresses her surprise that Amy would use the flower missiles since she was only trying to humor Amy when she included them in their outfit design. Things get busy at the cafe in the following weeks, but Ryo skips afternoon classes and volunteers to help. Hayato expresses his concerns about this, but Ryo avoids him with sassy talk. Later that day, Hayato complains about being exhausted, but the girls complain about his lack of table manners. Shirajiku explains to the other girls that it's because they had a full house at the cafe that day, but Akane notices that Ryo has been skipping classes and asks her to try putting less of an effort. Later on, Hayato visits Rito and advises her not to stress herself too much, but Rio recalls how her mom had implied that she looked pathetic because she was always overworking and asks if he's implying the same. Hayato tells Rio that he was only trying to ask her to do whatever she wants if it makes her happy and Rio recalls how his grandmother has told him the same thing. The following day, while the girls share breakfast, Uka asks Akane if she has any suggestions on their new outfits, but Akane tells them she's going out to work. After she leaves, Hayato asks the girls if Akane has another job elsewhere, and they tell him that she's a member of a band but they had never seen any of her concerts. They also tell them of how Akane doesn't like people knowing about it and when asked, she would only tell them that it's nothing special. Hayato dryly remarks that it's probably because her band is not good. He later informs the girls that he's going to the city to get a new toasting machine. But while in the city, Hayato is surprised when he overhears people talking about Akane's show and how she's so good. He initially considers watching a movie before heading back home, but eventually decides to watch her concert. 
At a Kenyan's concert, she sings a song about a girl whose actions and opinions don't matter and she woes the audience with her amazing vocals. After the show, Hayata waits behind to tell Akane that her voice was pretty amazing. He also teases her about being opinionated with her lyrics. Akane gets embarrassed by this and asks him not to tell the other girls about it. Afterward, Hayato and Amy hitch a ride back home and Hayato asks if she plans on following a career in music after the cave takes off but Akane tells him that it's not worthwhile. She further remarks that nothing she says or does is worthwhile. However, Hayato passionately tells her that her music moved his heart and something that wasn't worthwhile couldn't have touched him in such a way. He also reveals that he got her CD and he wouldn't waste his money on something that's not worthwhile. Later on, Hayato suggests that Akane changes her band name to something with a long-lasting impression such as Mussy Mustache Girls. It's summer break the next day and the girls stay at home and gossip about recent events together. Akane asks the girls for their opinions on a girls-only band that goes by the name of Mussy Mustache Girls, but they tell her that it's a weird name. The conversation later drifts to Hayato and the girls wonder about what would happen if he later decides to marry someone and they wonder whom he could marry. Shirajuku comments about Hayato being a decent man and emphasizes on the fact that Uko is the one who walked into the bathroom while the light was on and Amy had walked in on him despite him putting up a bathing use sign. Amy tells the girls that she might marry him since Hayato was always buying her food and a can sports a serious expression as she reveals that she might actually be willing to do it. She notices the stunned expression on their face as she realizes that it sounded weird coming from her, and she tells the other girls that she's joking. Hayato arrives at that moment and announces that he brought Kate but Amy runs into him and he lands on his butt. She asks him if he would like to give her chest a squeeze and Hayato chases her off with a hideous expression. Later on, Ryo is seen passing by the cafe when she hears Shirajuku teaching Hayato how to make a sandwich which Shirajuku makes absurd comments about something being too big to fit into something of hers that was too small and Ryo walks into the kitchen half expecting to see something absurd, but she's stunned when she realizes that nothing weird is going on. Hayata reveals that he would like to reduce the stress he's putting on Shirajuku, because she was always doing the majority of the work and Shirajuku reveals that she's amazed by his determination. Hayata smiles at this and Ryo wonders why he's smiling goofily at Shirajuku's compliment. Ryo gets jealous of his reaction to Shirajuku's compliment and also compliments him but Hayata smiles before before patting her on the head. Shirajuku gets jealous that Hayato patted Riho on the head and she bows her head, but they both give her a puzzled look. Later on, Hayato eats his failed sandwich attempts while Riho and Shirajuku engage in a cooking competition because they both want to hear whose sandwiches taste nicer. After they're done, Hayato refuses to eat their sandwiches cause he doesn't want to offend anyone. The girls pester him to taste their food but he claims that he's full from eating his sandwiches and the girls save it for dinner. At dinner that night, each person eats Shirajuku and Ryo's sandwich and Amy complains about being the only one who gets to eat Hayato's sandwiches. Hayato tells her that it's because all dishes are the same to her and she can't tell a good meal from a bad meal. Amy is offended by this but she eats the sandwich anyway. She tells the others that it's so good and asks them to add it to the menu and everyone screams no way. Later on, Amy practices a special fighting technique in front of Oka. Uga asks what she's trying to do and Amy reveals that she was hoping to release a magical orb that could blast any opponent. After trying for so long without getting results, Amy gives up on her goals. Later on, Hayato notices that Amy was acting like a normal person, which was quite unusual for her. After asking around, he later discovers that Amy had lost a match and believes that she has no talent for fighting. Hayato tells her that it's probably not because she lacks talent that she lost the match but because she was focusing on whichever fighting technique she had been using. Amy chooses this moment to reveal that she had been trying to release a magical orb that would blast her opponent to smithereens but she ended up getting kicked. Oils and Hayato admonish her for this as they wonder why she thought it would work out. Later on, the cafe gets an influx of customers but only Shirajuku helps out. He asks Ryo to help him out but she refuses to help because it's her day off. After a while, Hayato goes into the mansion and calls out to the other girls but no one answers. He visits Oka and asks her for help but she refuses. He notices Akane and Amy's slippers and tries to talk to them but Oka tries to keep him out of the room. Hayato barges into Aoka's room and sees Akane and Amy stripping. He screams in horror and apologizes before running downstairs. Later that day, while Hayato closes the store, he recalls how he had asked Ryo to stop putting in too much of an effort and realizes that he shouldn't have pressured her to assist him in the cafe. He also realizes that he had been putting too much pressure on them when they were only employees and not his actual family, so he makes up his mind to tell them that they could stop pretending to be his family. Hayato is stunned when he opens the door to the main house and realizes that the girls had organized a party to congratulate him on the two-month anniversary of the cafe. The girls reveal that they had been trying so hard to keep him from noticing, which was why Alka had asked Amy and Akane to strip after he entered her room earlier. 
The girls are thrown into a festive mood, but Akane's smile suddenly fades off as her phone vibrates with a call from her mother. Akane excuses herself and we see a somber expression on her face as she talks to her mother. The following week, Shirajuku is surprised when Akane praises her for making the delicious breakfast. The other girls are also stunned by this as Akane is known for keeping to herself. Later on, Akane walks in on Hayato complaining about how Amy had broken his laptop. Akane gently corrects Amy about carrying a dumbbell while carrying tea, before telling Hayato not to squeeze Amy's chest too hard. Akane teases asks if Hayato would like to squeeze hers and he almost passes out in shock. During dinner, Akane surprises the girls when she agrees to bathe with Amy's rubber duck. After she leaves, they comment about how she has gotten a lot less and more sociable in the past two months, but Hayato suspects that something is going on. Later on, Hayato is shown making coffee in the cafe when Akane walks in. She asks why he's making coffee in the middle of the night and he tells her he always does it the night before. Akane recalls that his grandmother had done the same when she was alive and Akane tells him he's truly the son of his grandmother. Hayato asks why Akane was suddenly doling out compliments to people especially since she rarely ever praised others. He also asks if she's moving out and Hayato wears a flustered expression on her face and wonders how he knew. She's hurt that he doesn't show her to stay but she teasingly asks if he would like to touch her chest before she leaves. Hayato asks her to stop messing around with his feelings before telling her that he would love to go out on a date with her. The following day, the other girls are filled with envy after discovering that Akane is currently on a date with Hayato. Meanwhile, Akane gets pissed off at Hayato because he only asks questions about how she makes coffee and doesn't instigate any date-related activity. He reveals that he was trying to learn everything he could about making coffee and is stunned to learn that Akane actually wanted to go out on a date with him. He asks her to beg him to take her on a movie date, but Akane refuses and they head back home. Later that evening, the other girls discover that Akane is moving out and beg her to stay. Hayato hopes that she'll stay because he enjoys spending time with her, but Akane tells them that her family owned and operated an enterprise for 200 years and she's the sole heir to her family wealth. She also reveals that her mother had found out about her band and recent activities, but was now demanding that she returns home because she had arranged for someone that she would get married to. Akane recalls that Hayato's grandmother had told her to follow her dreams and forget about everything else because she would guide her when her mother eventually tried to snatch her dreams for her. She asks Hayato to help her in his grandmother's stead and he agrees. Later on, Hayato sets up a meeting with Akane's mother, but her mother complains about her dress and hair color in a condescending manner. She tells Akane that her one-year break from home had been a waste and Akane agrees to everything without challenging her mother. After a while, Akane lashes out at Hayato for not helping her despite claiming that he would help her. Hayato accuses Akane of being spineless and reveals that it's probably because she kept allowing her mother to make decisions for her and that her mother wasn't allowing her to act on her own. He asks her why he should fight for someone that didn't believe she was worth fighting for and Akane decides to show her mother the things she had developed a passion for. Akane starts off by brewing coffee for her mother. But while she prepares the coffee, Hayato tells her mother about how coffee's taste depends on the skills of the barista. Akane serves her mother the coffee and her mother is stunned to realize that it tastes really good. She further reveals that she had also been forced to take over her family business as a teenager. However, she is moved by Akane's passion for her band and her work at the cafe and that she agrees to allow Akane to stay for as long as she wants. Before Hayato's mother leaves, she teases Akane as she realizes that Akane has developed feelings for him. Akane tries to convince her that she doesn't like him, but her mother tells her that Hayato would make a good match. She also asks her not to lose to the other girls who are formidable rivals, and Akane promises not to lose the battle of love before her mother drives off. Later on, Hayato tells the girls that he plans on starting a beach hut where they could sell coffee alongside other delicious treats, since it's beach season and fewer people would be visiting the cafe. The girls support his decision and Uka offers to design new costumes for the girls. Later on, Uka walks into the living room and sees Hayato among the other girls. She flaunts her provocative attire to him and asks what he thinks about their beach costumes, but Hayato looks away in embarrassment. Ryo is jealous about Uka flaunting her assets to Hayato and she runs out of the room only to arrive in a more provocative outfit. Later on, Shirajuku shows Hayato and the other girls a watermelon parfait recipe that she had just developed for their beach menu. Hayato praises her for her creativity before trying to take a picture for their social media page. But just before he takes a shot, Emi moves her head toward the parfait cup and stares at it greedily. Hayato scolds Emi for ruining the picture and tries taking another picture of it, but he's stunned when he turns back and sees Oka taking bites from it. He realizes that the parfait was no longer suitable for a photo shoot and asks Shirajuku if she would be willing to make a new one, but she sadly reveals that they've run out of watermelon. Hayato is pained by this, and he eventually ends up posting the bad picture with Emi wearing weird eyeglasses. Luckily for them, the picture goes viral and they eventually open their hut for the summer. On their opening day, the business takes off as Hayato's grandmother's former business partners also bring in more customers. 
Ryo's impeccable social skills also help them in garnering more clients and Hayato feels envious of her as he assumes that she was probably born with social skills. Hayato also expresses relief that the girls' costumes are a lot less revealing than before and their opening day is a general success as the watermelon parfait becomes a hit among new customers. Later on, Hayato's attractive appearance earns him the attention of girls and Riho gets jealous seeing him interact with other girls. She chases the girls off before returning to her duties and also complains after seeing Hayato flirting with Akane. Later on, Riho is seen waiting tables when the gangsters from summer try to rough handle her. Shirajuku sends Ami to scare them off and Ami wears a mask and scares the males off. She also adds that mad dog Uka is within the premises and the gangsters run out of the restaurant with their heels touching their heads. Later on, Hayato expresses his concern for Ryo as she takes on the bulk load of work. She passes out at that moment and Hayato and the other girls panic. Later on, Ryo wakes up in her room and Hayato asks her to take a break from work. Later on, some interviewers come by the restaurant and ask for an interview about the success of their cafe, but Hayato attributes it to Ryo. Ryo hears some people asking about her and walks out to answer the interviewer's questions, but she's stunned when one of the interviewers recognizes her. He tells the others of how she was a former child star and people stare at Ryo in disapproval while wondering how a child star could end up in a cafe. Rito picks up on the hostile expressions from people and runs out of the restaurant. The reporters apologize, but Hayato asks Amy to chase them out. Later on, the girls tell Rito that they don't care about her past and she would always be Rio, their admirable sister. Later on, Amy is seen goofing around in the cafe when a lady who looks identical to Oka strolls into the cafe. The lady walks up to her and scolds her for not being diligent with her duties and Amy runs to Oka to cry about it. She suddenly realizes that the lady she had seen earlier is Oka's doppelganger and she passes out. Amy stays in hibernation mode for a while and Riho later revealed that it's probably because Amy had read somewhere that when you see two doppelgangers you'll die. Hoka dryly informs them that the lady at their beach is her twin sister and invites her sister for dinner at their place. Her sister visits and shares her disdain for Oka's job and living situation. Oka's sister Kika blames her sister's job for Oka refusing to go to Tokyo University and also suggests that Hayato and the girls share a sexual relationship. She talks about how Akane looks like someone who is mixed up in gang activity or some complex family business while Amy looks like she's a dumb fitness guru who would do anything a man asks her to do. On the other hand, Ryo looks like someone who puts in way too much of an effort to please others, while Shirajuku looks like an innocent lady who was probably the most perverted of them all on the inside. The girls are stunned at how Kika correctly judges their character but Kika insults Hayato and the other girls and Uka slaps her before asking her to never talk down her family. Kika leaves with tears streaming down her cheeks but the following day she spies on her sister on the beach. Hayato notices her staring and Kika realizes that she has been discovered so she scurries off. Later on, Hayato approaches Oka and tells her that he had seen her sister spying on her in the cafe the other day. He also reveals that Uka is the most kind-hearted of the girls and he doesn't want her to get hurt by familial ties. He also encourages her to make up with her sister and Uka meets up with her sister the following day to apologize to her. Her sister reveals that was hurt that Uka had sewn clothes for the girls but had never bothered to design any outfit for her. She's also hurt that Uka chose them over her but Uka promises to sue clothes for her and introduce her to the other girls. Uka takes her sister home while hoping to reintroduce her to the girls but she is stunned when she opens the door and sees Shirajuku having another one of her drunk fits. But this time, she is joined by the other girls. Luka quickly slams the door before her sister can see a thing, and she suggests that they come back later. Her sister gets suspicious and asks what she's trying to hide, but Uka is saved by Akane who invites them to the cafe for some coffee. Later on, Akane notices Hayato sporting a sad expression and she questions him about this. Hayato tells her of how his grandmother had told him about fireworks depicting the end of summer and fun as a kid. Akane gives Hayato a drink to cheer him up, but she makes a sudden decision to be more earnest about her feelings. She asks Hayato for his opinions on gazing at the stars with someone he cares about, and Akane is sad as he reveals that he has no time to think about things like that at the moment. He notices the forlorn expression on her face and tells her that he would love to watch the stars with someone special someday while sharing a coffee. Akane smiles at this and turns to leave, but before heading out of his room, she tells him that the moon looks beautiful tonight and Hayato's eyes are instantly directed toward her back. He stutters before yelling that she knew exactly what he meant and Akane laughs at this. Later on, Hayato and the girls visit Bathhouse and his grandmother's former business partner asks the girls if they had developed any feelings for Hayato. The girls avoid her question but Akane calls Ryo aside and tells her that she likes Hayato and she had already told him that she's in love with him. She asks Ryo if she's also in love with him but Ryo denies it. The following week, Ryo gets bothered as she notices Akane openly making moves on Hayato. Later on, Ryo goes out to purchase groceries in the evening and the other girls suggest that Hayato escorts her. On their way back home, Ryo stops Hayato by the entrance and tells him of her feelings for him. Hayato is unnerved by this and struggles to come up with a suitable response but after much deliberation, he tells her that he's happy to hear of her feelings but he doesn't have the time to think about romance at the moment. 
Later on, Ryo confronts Akane about spending too much time with Hayato, but the two get into a heated argument which garners the attention of passersby. Amy settles the fight by asking the two girls to hold two slimy mud balls. She reveals that whoever drops her slimy ball first has to drop out of the contest for Hayato's heart. Hayato arrives at that moment and is stunned to see the two girls holding mud balls. He asks what they're doing as Amy tells him that they're engaging in a dropping contest for his heart. Hayato blushes furiously before begging the girls to stop toying with him, but Akane simply tells Ryo and will soon understand how serious they are about him. Later on, Shirajuku discovers that Ryo and Akane had already confessed their feelings to Hayato and she walks around with a sad facial expression. Hayato approaches her and asks her to show him how to cook because he would love to reduce her workload, but Shirajuku gets mad at him for implying that she won't always be around. Hayato apologizes to Shirajuku and tells her that she'll have to get married someday and leave the restaurant. Shirajuku smiles sadly and agrees to teach him a few dishes. They later visit the market to get some groceries, but they run into Hayato's grandmother's business partners, who comment on how his grandma was on the level of a three-star chef. Later on, Hayato suspects that Shirajuku is hiding something from him and asks why she had been sneaking into his grandmother's room recently. Shirajuku tells Hayato how his grandmother had inspired her to learn how to cook after smelling one of his grandmother's meals. Hayato asks if his grandmother had given up on her dreams of becoming a grand chef because of him because she had abandoned everything she had and was forced to open a cafe just so she could have enough time to take care of him. Hayato tears up and thanks Shirajuku after she reveals that his grandmother had never regretted her decision because she had confided in her about how Hayato became the sole purpose for her existence. Later on, Hayato and the girls go out for a picnic to celebrate the growth of their restaurant. To Hayato's dismay, Shirajuku drinks a cup of wine and gets drunk almost immediately after. She announces that she's now eligible to love Hayato and is now the third contestant for his heart since she's no longer hiding anything from him. Amy and Uka express their surprise that others confess their feelings for Hayato, but Riho and Akane look away shyly. The effect of the drink hits harder and Shirajuku grabs Hayato and tells him she loves him. She asks him if he would love to make love with her and Hayato shrieks in fear after she suggests that they make some babies while at it. Meanwhile, the other girls laugh at Shirajuku and her drunken antics. The series ends with a crazy cliffhanger as we're taken to the future where Hayato's daughter arrives home from school. She sees a picture of the five girls and picks it up before asking if the picture had been taken while she was working part-time. While the girl shares Amy and Hayato's signature purple hair, there's no telling which one of the five cafe goddesses is the mother of this kid. 